Um, hopefully you can hear me. Um, say hello if you can hear me. Hopefully my sound is okay, but just let me know if there's anything that's a bit off. I'm going to start drawing, um, but you can um, put questions in the live chat, not a problem. And um, I will look around every now and again and answer any questions if there are any. But just let me know that you can hear this and that everything... Um, is okay. Um, so I'm going to be drawing this this little and excuse my disgusting nails. All my nail polish has come off, so I've got very grubby fingers at the minute. Um, but do say hello. Oh hi hi yes good good. Um, yeah do say hello. Make sure you can hear me okay. And I've made a start on the nose band bit here. Um, and then I'm now going to make a start on this bit here. Um, I just thought it'd be quite interesting for you to see how I um, create um, leather, I, I guess. Um, and the first thing that I do is I kind of have a look at the picture. I'm sorry I can't show you the picture that I'm working on because it's, it's trying to set it up on the... My technical st skills aren't, aren't amazing. Um, but the first thing I look at um, to begin with is whether, it's, um, whether the, the leather is warm or cool. Actually, the leather down here is quite warm. So I've used something like a warm grey, uh, something my sepia, um, I think it's warm grey is in there, as ever, amazingly prepared. I've got a warm grey, I've got a warm grey four here. So um, 4.30am, oh my goodness, <laughs> you're so keen. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, hopefully it'll be a good stream for you and give you lots of information. Oh my lord. 4.30am. Uh, yeah, so I've got, I'm using polychromos and I'm just going to sort of like start start drawing basically, start and, and um, if you've got any questions, ask away and what I'll do is I'll try to explain what I'm doing as I'm as I'm doing it. Um, so I'm, I'm using the, the warm grey first of all, there's, um, there's a bit of mane up here, so um, the leather up here at the top and what I'm going to do is with something like this when you when you kind of sometimes you're not quite sure where to start um you know do I start here do I start there the best thing is just to start um and then you can kind of say all oh, right okay yeah I need to I need to do this now and, and that now so the, the the best thing to always do if you're kind of procrastinating a little bit is just to jump in and do something um so um ba -dum -bum -bum. Good. Oh, Mickey's here as well. Oh, that's nice to see you. Well, I'm so glad you've joined me. I've told all of the children to be quiet. <laughs> all the children. Um, well, two of them. My my son's just nipped out. Um, and uh, yeah, and I've got my I've got my daughter all ready to come and grab the dogs if they start to misbehave. So they've had a nice walk this morning. It's been gorgeous here in Yorkshire. It's been really really warm. So I'm just very gently, um, really, really, really light pressure. I'm using pastel mat as well, so um, you know it can can be a little bit grainy. Um, and I've just gone in and sort of added a few sort of like little little bits. Uh, my outlines are never really good; they're all a bit sort of chunky and and rubbish. So with something like this, I kind of have to come in and and just do a bit of um, a bit of playing around really to get to. Um, all the bits in the right place and then I'm just going to come down here and just add a little bit of this warm grey down the edge of this um, leather the headpiece here so this is the edge um, so that that's on that plane and that's on that plane if that makes sense so I'm just coming in here it takes quite a bit of concentration doing um, leather and and small intricate details and everything but um, you know me, I can chat away, whatever I'm doing, I can still chat. <laughs> so, will we be able to watch this later if I can't stay with you? For, yes, you will, Steph, because you know, once you start with me, I'm going to be here all day. <laughs> exactly, Penny. How many hours today? Yes, we'll still be here at eight o'clock. <laughs> my problem is, once I get going, that's it. And because I'm so used to, to recording, and I can record, not all in one go, but I can record videos up to sort of like 30, 40 hours. You know, it just, it doesn't occur to me to stop talking. 
So you've got me for the whole weekend. Aren't you lucky? Um, I'm just going to bring a little bit of... Um, oh, you can see as well, my pencils are quite sharp as well, which is, again, it's a little bit unusual for me, but when you're doing tiny details like this, you, you do need sharp pencils. Um, you know, otherwise it would be like coming at these tiny areas with a, I don't know, a toilet brush or a, <laughs> or a poker. Um, you know, so you do you do need sort of sharp pencils. The, one of the things that I, um, I'm loath to do is to create really... Um, well, not really sharp lines, but um, I don't like, I like to, I like my lines to blend, um, you know, so you don't get sort of like a, just a straight line. I, I want them to sort of like blend in and that's kind of what I'm doing here. I'm just using this, this is the dark indigo um, over the top of that warm grey in there. And what I'm doing here is I'm putting off having to do all of the, um, the stitching. <laughs> So I'm using my I'm using my own procrastination procrastination methods of putting off the inevitable by doing all of the other bits. <laughs> so uh, building my confidence up so that when I do put the stitching in, you'll all go, oh, my God, that's amazing. And I'll go, oh, thank God it's worked. Um, yeah. So that's that's kind of what I'm doing at the moment. So and then we've got this dark area here. I'm just going to bring in a little bit of. Um, Oh, can I put Morton Violet into here? This isn't finished around here, but I'm just going to bring in a little bit of the Caput Morton Violet into this shadow um, and then a bit of black over the top of that just so we can increase the shadow down there a bit. So I'll just bring a bit of that up to there. So I, I do like to kind of work on, on the sections and kind of, you know, we're working on the leather, but it's still going to bring a little bit into the onto the horse's face as well, especially where there's like the shadowy bits guys I hope everybody's having my first cup of tea with you and then I'll work on the lines that I'm, oh that's nice oh very nice we've got somebody in Napoli oh that's lovely so I hope everybody's all right this morning I've um we went and did our our one trip out <laughs> um we went um oh I've got this this is a Pablo this is a really good pencil if anybody's thinking about getting Pablo's they are really good and the, the light grey is awesome um so we went and did a um my next door neighbor there in their 70s and and a, a completely isolating and uh, so I've gone and done a bit of shopping for her um and had to um had to queue we had to queue at Morrison's which was bit um bit exciting so uh and then they had us going it, all of the all of the aisles are all blocked off and it was all i was getting a bit where, where am i supposed to go <laughs> anyway it was all right so you can see i kind of layer all sorts of different colors in here so we've got layering um the the gray the blue then i've got the light gray over the top just to kind of start to get that nice feeling of that um the the curve on that leather in there um and there's actually some pinky bits in there as well which i might start to pull in a little bit uh so now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to um as you can see my rubbish outline i haven't got any of the holes or anything in so i'm just going to put sort of quickly sort of sketch in the um the little holes Goodness knows if they're in the right place. They probably aren't, but hey-ho. Um, right, and then I'm going to just um, bring in some of the um, stitch marks. And I'm going to use the stylus here. Um, midnight black more often than polychromos black. Yes, I love, um, I love, I do love the, the light fast pencils. But the I, I find with something like this, when I'm doing the first details, um, I'm better to use a really, really hard pencil, like a, not that really hard, but like a polychromos because I can get sort of sharper details in there. Um, so this is where your heart is in your mouth and you um, you start to, now, do I put a line in there to follow or do I just wing it? Let's just wing it. Um, so we're just gonna start to bring in, and um, it's, a, it's a little tiny, it's not, it's not sharp, sharp, it's got a little end to it. And I'm just going to, um, be incredibly brave she says and just start to bring in 
and just pressing it into the paper. And the best thing to do with something like this is to keep going. Don't stop. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't stop. Because if you stop, you kind of um, lose your rhythm and where you're going. And you're just better with something like this just to keep your eyes on it. Don't blink, don't stop, don't do anything. Just keep going right to the end. Whew. And then hope for the best. We just have to hope that that's OK. Um, and then we'll do the other side. So we've always already got a little like a little bit of a grey bit in here as well. And then we're going to do exactly the same in here. Now, these might they may well get covered up. But again, just keep going get into you know you get into like a bit of a rhythm kind of follow you you really have to concentrate hard and be really careful when you're doing something like this probably best not to be talking <laughs> anyway so there they are they're in um trying to switch over from pastel pencils to color pencils but my drawings don't look as real karen that's a very good idea to swap <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, I, um it, it'll be about it'll be about just getting used to it that's all it is it'll be about just getting used to it and the other thing as well is you know don't give yourself a hard time if you like your pastel, pastel pencils then you know just use them okay so I don't know whether you can see that coming through there maybe not let's just zoom in just a touch so hopefully you can see so i can't see anything now because my camera is so close but hopefully you can see they look a bit they look a bit rubbishy at the moment because i've only got one layer on there but hopefully what you can see is you can see those stitches coming in so i'm just going to put a layer of this warm grey in here it's going to come over here as well okay so you can see that a little bit better and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to um i'm just going to pull it back out a bit just because it's easier for me to work if it's just a touch uh higher up okay Focus again. Yeah. So, work on my sheet while listening. Great to see you drawing leather, looking lovely. You've drawn so much since yesterday. I know, I got, I must admit, um, could you do this on frisk Bristol boards? I cannot get on the fast mat. Yeah, of course you can. Um, yeah, of course you can do it on, on, you can do it on anything. You just, all you have to do is just slightly um, tweak your um, techniques. The pastel mat, um, I would say the pastel mat board, the one that I'm working on at the minute, if you can get a good smooth piece, um, it's the most, it's the closest to a smoother paper. Um, you know, just in that it's, um, it doesn't really react like, like the other pastel mat, you know, the, the, um, the pastel mat that's a little bit grittier. Um, and actually you can kind of um, use more techniques that you would do for your smoother paper like your Bristol and, and all of that type of stuff. So, yes, you would. And you can use the embossing, uh, all of that. You can use exactly in the same way and you would you would layer up in exactly the same way. The only thing that you won't be able to do is to get light over dark. Um, you know, and, and that's one of the things that's 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 amazing about pastel mat. So I'm just putting these little bits in there um, and then I'm going to start to come up here and I've got some blues in here and then I'm going to start to just so that's kind of just prepping everything and getting everything in place and then I can just start to work up here very hard to hear when you turn away from the mic oh hang on let me just bring the so my microphone is here. I'm hoping that you can, let me just double check that my microphone is the, that you're hearing me from the right one. Um, yep. 
I will turn it up slightly again. Okay, hopefully that, that's better for you. Might be really blowing your ears out now. So I've got my microphone right next to my mouth. I'll, I'll, start, I'll try to keep it there and I've turned it up a little bit. So I'm using the, um, the uh, Clairefontaine pastel map board, the white board. So, and then I'm going to bring in a little bit of the blue in here as well. So hopefully that's okay now, Judith. I've kind of tweaked the sound a little bit. So I'm going to come into here and I'm just using the dark indigo. I tend to use um, polychromos mostly for my leather work, just because I kind of know how they how they work. And I'm going to bring the. I'm going to bring. This is the uh, cold grey one that I'm just going to bring in over the top of this. So you can see you get sort of like a nice shine in there. And I'll probably bring a bit of pink into there as well. And we'll just get a little bit of that mane that's coming down in here. This is all dark. And then this is mane. And we've got a shadow in here. So the lighting on this picture is quite nice. There's, there's quite a lot of bright blues in it, which I'm sort of in places I'm toning back a bit and in other places I'm keeping. So we've just got that in there and then we've got a really dark bit. Uh, better oh that's good excellent that's all right then it's always tricky with uh, with sound you never know whether it's going to work properly or not so I'm just putting black in here for this dark area up here and then I'm going to put some um, I've got Vinnie breathing very loudly next to me <laughs> little tinker ears so let's get that down in there and then I'm going to bring, I've got a blue, um, this is light ultramarine and I'm just going to bring that into the, like I said, there's quite a lot of blues in this piece. The lighting is quite nice. So I'm just going to bring a little bit of that blue into there as well. And then we can do a bit more the black. Adding that blue is just going to make the black even more intense. So you can, um, you know, you can get really, really nice, rich, rich, rich black in there. And then we can just bring that in there. So you can see, well, I can see, I'm not sure whether you can see, the, um, the stitching is starting to come, look like actual stitching now which is quite good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, if I can find it, the um, just a bit of cinnamon up on the top here. And I'm just going to bring that into that highlight there. So I've started with a, a grey, I put like a... Um, a, a light grey over the top and then I've come back in again with the cinnamon and put that in there and then all of this is shadow in here let's turn that on to oops airplane mode and that's all dark in there so I've just put that in just block that in so I'm using quite hard pressure there because it's dark so I'm just going to whack it in So I always use light pressure unless there's just an area of just complete and utter darkness and then I'll, um, I'll, I'll use much harder pressure just to get that in. Okay, so we can see that that's starting to come in quite nicely there. Um, have you used the slice tool on the mane and, and ear yet? No, I've not used the slice tool at all. Um, I've not used the slice tool on the ears or the forelock. Um, they... 
I've, I've, what I've what I've used on the forelock is this um, the the Pablo light grey um, and I can just bring in over the top those little stray hairs and I find if I'm drawing really nice soft things like this um, using the um, using a, a pencil rather than the slice will give me a nicer finish um, I may use the slice if some of these stitches don't come out particularly well I might then go back in and, and use the slice just to help there a little bit um, in fact I'll use that blue which is gentian blue I'm just going to put this into this bit of mane here and I'm just going to bring that into there as well not that I'm going to leave them that colour but um, just to kind of distinguish it a little bit from the um, uh, from the leather that we're drawing and then this is the dark sepia so dark sepia is a really really good colour it's um, it's it's neutral it's the colour that I always start um, my portraits with I start my eyes using this you can see these little stitches are starting to come through now um, it's just a good neutral grey uh, you know you can use it instead of um, a black as well in places and I'm just going to bring a little bit of blue into here and then I'm going to bring in so that and then we've got like a highlighty bit so when you start to do um, you know blending and everything the blending on pastel mat is the I mean it's the it's the best thing in the world because your, all of your pencils just blend beautifully. You don't have to do a huge amount of um, a huge amount of anything really to be able to blend them, um, because if you're gentle with your pressure, the, the pigment just sits on top of the tooth, and then you can just um, you can just blend when you put your next colours in. You can just it just moves the pigment around, um, you know, and then that's it blended. You know, you don't have to use hard pressure or anything. So on here, we've just got one layer of the grey. I've got another layer coming in here of the dark sepia. And then I've got this um, highlight here of the um, blue. And it just, it works. It works really, really nicely. You honestly don't have to have a huge amount of effort to be able to get it to work. Um, just light pressure. Um use the slice lol my eskers are all sleeping quietly right now oh that's good yes my two are sleeping nice and quietly as well long may it continue it always makes a difference if they've had a walk i have to say um you know they've had a walk they've had a play so they should all be all right now okay so we can see those little bits of stitching there and what i'm going to do with the stitching uh, as we kind of work on this is just push those stitches back a little bit so that they're not bright white and then I'm still coming in very gently with my dark sepia here just because I'm using the dark sepia doesn't mean to say that this is this is all going to be grey because I can layer colours over the top so you know I've got my grey there and then I'm bringing some of this blue in with it and again it's just nicely just sh merging all of those bits of pencil pigment together so I don't have to do burnishing or anything like that and this you know we, I've got quite a smooth finish going on it here already and we're only on to layer three four maybe um, you know so and a, and a lot of people think with with pastel mat you have to put tons and tons and tons of layers in um, and sometimes yes you do you know sometimes you can't get away from it because you you know you do have to get a lot of layers in but you know other times you really don't and if I can get away with just putting a couple of layers in then I will so what I'm trying to do here now is this leather is actually um, on a plane going that way so um, and there's there is a grain to the leather so that's what I'm trying to do I'm trying to kind of indicate that um, this is on sort of like a, a bit of an angle um, so as I come down here I'm just going to make my um, uh, pencil strokes kind of go in that direction, if you see what I mean. And then I'm going to put in some 
We've got some nice wrinkly bits down here. This is it's a nice photo. It's not incredibly amazingly detailed, but it's you know it's 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 fine. It's it's a you know it's detailed enough. Um, it's not highly highly detailed. You can see already that's looking you know it's looking okay actually. Um, so what am I going to do next? I'm going to bring a little bit more blue in. So the blue is kind of a colour that's that's sort of running throughout really. It's um, you know it's in the it's in the horse's hair. It's in the it's in the face. Um, you know, so kind of bringing that into the leather work as well is going to work quite nicely. Mm, I've got a bit of a, I don't suppose it'll matter. I've got a bit of a funny curve going on there, but I'm just going to um, just bring that down there. This is all dark down here as well. That's better and then I can just darken up sorry about the sort of sticking sound it's the pastel mat that wants to come wants to pop off the board okay and then I can just bring a bit of the black in just to darken a bit do I you do use black a lot um you know just to to darken, to sharpen, that type of stuff. Um, you know, I think it's a it's a really really useful to use it, and then I use it over the top of other colours. You know, uh, like we did up there for the richness. Okay. So. And then I've got my, um, I've got all my new equipment that's um, that's ready to go. I've been researching and looking for um, sort of new new camera and everything for uh, probably around four or five months, because um, I'm using the uh, Logitech, which is you know which is great, but. Um, you know, I wanted something that was going to give me a little bit more, um, a bit sharper, really. So uh, I've been doing a little bit of research, and um, I was I was supposed to be going over to Manchester to Wex at Manchester, the big camera store, but obviously that's um, kind of out of the window now. You know, to, just to sort of try a load of them. And uh, anyway, I've been having emails backwards and forwards with with the chaps from um, from Wex. And we've kind of just, you know, decided on the camera and everything. So, um, yeah, so I'm hoping within the next sort of few weeks, well, if I can get them sent over, because there's a delay on, um, well, there's a delay on stuff from Amazon. I've, I've bought a um, like new scissor arm and all of that type of stuff to hold it. But um, th what they're saying is I'm not going to get it till the beginning of May because um, it's a non-essential item which is, um, you know, I can understand that. It's a bit, just a bit frustrating, really. But, um, um, yeah, so uh, hopefully I'll be able to um, get some better shots. I've been trying to trying to use my um, my Nikon, but it's just um, it's just not not good enough, really. So I've got everything lined up and just need to uh, just need to get them get them purchased should be good hi Lala how are you um right so and then it's just a case of just keeping on um you know you just sort of keep layering um keep adding bits the nice thing about the pastel mat is that you can go in and you can lighten bits up if you need to do you know, if you've gone and you think, oh, I've gone a little bit dark there, you can go in and just add uh, like a nice little bit of shine in there. The the uh, the Pablo light grey is really good for that. And it gives you a really, really nice smooth. So this is looking quite nice and smooth down here now. 
um, you know, so it's um, a combination of the pencils and quite quickly you can get something that's, that looks, looks pretty good. Okay, so just want to bring in a bit more of that. We've come in a bit too far there. That's okay. So what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to see if I can get some of this tape. Oops, and just take a little bit off. I mean tape. I always struggle with tape because it always starts peeling off at weird angles. Get rid of that. Right, so I'm going to just get a bit of the magic tape. So this is a really good um, piece of kit to use with the um, with the pastel mat. Um, so I'm just going to come in here and just take off a little tiny bit of that. So instead of using a razor, I'm just laying the um, tape over the top of that pigment that's going in there. Just lifting it off a bit. Um, and then we can just pop that back in, but not quite as far. So that's quite good. That's all right. And then we can use the black again. So the tape's a really good, um, really good piece of kit. You know, if you sort of make bit of, a bit of a mistake, or you know, you want to make some texture in something, or you know, something like that, it's um, it is pretty good. Okay, so then we'll come in here again. Add a little bit more dark here. Um, so this, what I'm going to do with that is I'm just going to shunt this hole over because it's in the wrong place. So as easy as that, I can just go straight over the top of the black. And I'm not even using hard pressure. So we can get that out. This one is in the right place, so that's okay. But that, that other one wasn't. And that's the beauty of pastel mat, you know, it's um it's just so easy to make edits. It's um it's fab. And then I can just put that hole back in there. And then I can use the light grey come in around a little bit in there once we get this a bit darker it'll work a bit nicer and then i'm going to use the um, dark indigo now come in over a little bit more pressure where the darker areas are So I can just be a little bit more careful around those holes and just leave that little bit of a white, a lighter highlight around it. And come down in here. And then I'm going to bring some pigment into here, but then um, I want to bring in some of those sort of leathery um, creases. Okay, and then that's that. And then this comes down to here. That's right. Okay. And then again, this has just come out, just tweaked out a little bit too far. So this is just my putty eraser down here. Uh, I heard about the tape trick, but never actually seen it before. That's awesome. Yeah, it is. It's a good, it is a good trick. I got it from... Um, um, Lisa Clough, uh, you know, Lacry Fine Art, that's who I um, got it from. Um, and it it is a really good trick. I don't know who she got it from, but it's a it is a really good trick. Um, and it's really useful. The the one thing you have to be careful of is that you don't um, well, you realize that uh, if you use it very early on with your layers, you can take the majority of your pigment off. Um, which can be a little bit annoying. Um, so, um, you know, that's that's what you've got to be aware of. So let's just darken that up a little bit more. And we'll darken that up a little bit more. 
and then I'm going to come in with this um, it's quite small is this but I'm just going to come in and just start to build in a few of these sort of creasy bits around here I'm using the texture of the paper to help me it's a bit trickier when the when it's quite small okay and then I'm just going to run my warm grey over the top of these quite hard I can actually get a little bit of pigment in there and just knock those back slightly. So I don't want them to disappear altogether, but I just want to knock them back a little bit. And then I can just come in and sort of enhance a bit. A bit. Sometimes you get, you know, amazing photos and you can really, really go to town with um, with the leather and the details and everything. OK. And then while we've started to put these little areas of um, the, the light grey, we can just start to come in there. And just start to build in those creases and it doesn't have to be you know you don't have to spend hours and hours and hours well like you can see here you don't need to spend hours creating these little things um, the majority of the time it's just a, a few little marks um, highlight it in the right place put a bit of a shadow on it and um, and that's it you know you've got something that um, that looks pretty much like um you know leather um and that's that's kind of you know if, if you can if you can create something that looks like what it's supposed to look like relatively simply then um you know you're kind of onto a winner really okay and let's just uh, this is the white polychromos which i don't use an awful lot if i'm wanting to layer over the top of stuff because um it's quite difficult to to then put other colours over the top because it, it kind of um, I can't think of the word, but it's it's is not very good for layering over the top of it. it sort of stops other colours going. That's not looking okay. Um, did you emboss the stitches? Yes, the stitches were embossed. Yet. Yeah um sort of very quickly and bravely we just we just you know whacked them in <laughs> um i would i would say you know concentrate quite hard actually when you're putting them in because it's um you know if they do go a little bit wrong then it's um you know it's a bit of a pain but these ones looking okay actually they're looking okay so i'm now just going to bring in again i'm just going to sharpen up that pablo i think let's put that in there um, and my sharpener is the um, it's the swordfish curve, so it fits all of the pencils in. So sharpen that up, and we'll just come in and just bring in a little bit more of a shine in here. A bit more of a shine in here. You can see how nice and smooth it's looking. You know, it's um, the combination of the Pablo and the and the um, Polychromos is really good. And I just pick up a couple of those stitches again. We just don't want them bright white. That's all. They all just look a little bit strange if they're bright white. Make them look a little bit more stitch-like. Um, and then I can just bring in a bit more in here. Um, but, you know, pastel matte, if you've not used pastel matte before, it is a really, really good surface. Um, you know, it can be frustrating, um, but I, I, I think the pros out, 
outweigh the cons. Um, you know, in that you can get light over dark. You can get, you know, you can get really, really nice detail. Um, and you can, you know, get a load of layering on it as well, which is good. Okay, so to the black. So the Pablo is quite a, it's a softer, it feels like you're drawing with velvet. Um, whereas the polychromos are a, a little bit harder. So good for, for, you know, really tiny details and stuff like that. Um, the Pablos are still relatively hard, but um, they're, they're, they're just a really nice pencil to use. So you'd, you'd kind of choose your pencils for this sort of thing. You'd choose them for the feel rather than the colour, because all of the colour is just grey and black and blue. Um, you know, so you'd kind of choose them for the, um, for the feel rather than the, uh, rather than the actual colour. That's so annoying. The, the pastel matte board bows, so it just wants to jump off your board all of the time. <laughs> it's really, really irritating. So I'm just bringing a little bit of black in there. Um, Bonnie, do you find that some of the pink polys feel a bit waxy compared to the browns? Yes. Um, yeah, in fact, um, I think all, all of the polychromos feel different. Um, you get some that feel really, really quite um, smooth when they lay down on the paper and you get others that feel really, really grainy and, and a bit horrible. Um, and it is to do with the pigment. Um, I mean, I don't use a huge amount of pinks, I have to say. Um, but it's it's definitely to do with the pigment. So, um, you know, and then what, what you can do is you can kind of uh, combine them with other makes of pencil to get the, you know, the feeling that you want. So combining sort of like a, a pinky coloured Pablo or something with your polychromos, you know, may well give you a, a better result or the the result that you were wanting. Tammy, which Logitech camera do you use? Looking for a camera to film with and the quality looks great. Also, do you like these videos? Is it daylight or specific light? Oh, okay, so Tommy, I've got the Logitech 920. Um, really, really inexpensive. It's tiny. It's this big. Um, it's, um, it's really good. It's really good. Um, I've, it's got a USB, so it plugs straight into my Mac. And then I record via OBS which is, I don't know what it stands for, but it's a free recording software. You just download it and it's really good. And you can live stream, which is what I'm doing here, live streaming from it. You can record from it. And the recording files are good because they record on the fly. So as you're recording, it's saving them, which is absolutely brilliant because you don't, before I was saving to, um, I think I was doing like QuickTime or something, and I'd record, I'd do 20 minutes, then I'd stop recording, then I'd have to save and the file would take 20 minutes to save and then I start recording again. Whereas with the OBS, it just records it, saves it all, all at the same time. It's, it's absolutely brilliant. Um, and then what else did you say? <clears throat> How do I light my videos? Um, I've got a big softbox. So I've got big camera lights. They're the Niwa ones um, and they, they're on like a big stand, a big tripod. Um, they're about... I'm looking at it now. I'm going to blind myself. Um, I'd say they're about two and a half foot by two foot with a big soft box on and they've got daylight bulbs in them. Um, they're really cheap to run and I have it. Mine are on the, for probably around seven hours a day um, and they just give me a constant light. The other really good, well, what you need to be really careful of is you, if you're recording, you're wanting to record, especially with white paper, <clears throat> if you don't get your lighting right, it will flicker and you'll get this flickery thing over your video, which you, you won't be able to, um, well, you will, but people won't want to watch it. So um, that's one of the reasons why I've got these big lights is because that it reduces the flicker. Um, <clears throat> and then the Logitech comes with software that you can download. Um, and 
uh, again you need to have it on specific settings so you would put it on a PAL setting which will help to reduce the flicker um, you know so it's, it's a good it's a really good camera um, but I'd, I'd I want something uh, just a little bit better really um, you know I've been doing this for well just over a year now and um, it would be quite nice to have you know to have a really professional setup it's not that it's not professional but um, you know it uh, I have I have visions of it being you know even better <laughs> so I hope that's helpful um, just purchase some dark grey and white pastel matte but hesitate to draw on it um, uh, just jump in just do it just do it that's what I always say just jump in and draw on it um, maybe what you could do is just if you've got some sheets maybe just um, <clears throat> cut it down a little bit and give yourself sort of like the edge of a bit to, to to draw on so that you know if you're not sure whether it's for you or not then you know you haven't kind of ruined the rest of it but I, I, I mean if you're anything like me I find it really really hard I'm just going to put a bit of brown down that side I don't know where my studio is on now are they I'll just put a bit of burnt sienna down this side. Um, I find it really, really hard. To, no, I'm not going to use burnt sienna. Uh, oh, goodness, where are they? Where are my studio pencils disappeared? What's that one? There we go. Um, yeah, sorry. I find it really hard to just play, to just have a go. I have to actually be drawing something so I'm much better saying right I'm just going to draw this from start to finish to learn how to use a particular pencil um, and for me that that is the best thing for me to do is just jump in and use it um, you know so if, if that's it's, it's all dependent on how you learn really and if that's the best way for you then I would I would definitely say just choose a, a, a picture and just draw it um, otherwise just give it a bit of a play see what happens it's got to put a bit of context in here for me to be able to understand what I'm doing. So that's that bit there. So that's all okay. Um, so I'm just going to bring a bit more black into black into there and just lighten this up very slightly. And again, this this pencil here is really good. So if you're doing dark animals like a you know black cat or something like that you can use this to get all of your it's almost as bright as white um, you can use it to get all of your light areas um, you know into into the cat it's really good and that's what I love about pastel mat you know you can get the light over dark really really well Um, ba -ba don't have pablos or luminates yet just prismas polys and derm drawing plus a few light faster well that's okay you are um yeah open broadcasting software that's it chloe thank you um yeah yeah well that's okay you, your prismas are good your prisma white's really good um you know that'll be that'll work really well can't do test pieces i need a proper project to work on exactly anita i just i just i just have to jump in and just you know just do it <laughs> i'm 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 not very good at sort of you know having a having a play um i get bored you know i've got to i've got to have a i've got to get it you know i would be working on the whole thing right so we'll come back to that main up there um but that's quite speedy actually that bit that this, this little bit of leather so what we'll do is let's look at this bit here and the buckle um so again you can see my outline's not not brilliant um so i'll just come in with the black and just start to um just pick up a little bit on the outline of it bring that in there um, okay just need to watch the shading because the shading will throw anything out you can have everything in the right place and you're shading slightly wrong and and then it just throws all of your perspective and everything out so you your shading is as important as your 
um, outline really. So let's just darken that little bit up there. So you can see you can get relatively sharp lines in those in initial st um, layers on the pastel mat. You know, it, it, the best thing to do is sharp and very light pressure. And then I'm just going to put this shadow in here. It's always good to give yourself a little bit of context on something because then it's easier to kind of work with. I like to make everything as easy as possible for my small brain. Okay. Oh God, we bought, um, well, I'm saying we bought, my daughter bought this Morrison's own white chocolate hazelnut spread and, and it tastes like the inside of a bueno, chocolate bueno. Honestly, it's like, it's like the most amazing taste ever. <laughs> so we may have to go back and, you know, get a couple more jars um really really um, i mean if you like chocolate my goodness it's amazing and boy do i like chocolate um right so i'm just coming down here again just off off on a little bit of a <laughs> little bit of a tangent like i usually do just coming down here and just adding this shadow in here so i always think it's a good idea to get your real dark darks in um you know quite quickly because what happens is you can then judge how light your lights need to be so you can see on my drawings, I do tend to do quite a lot of freehand um, just because, you know, even if you've got sort of like a bit of, a, you know, an outline there, my outlines are, are, are very poor. Um, so I, I do end up doing a lot of this and I prefer to do that because then I know exactly what lines are, are where and what they are. Whereas if, you know, I put too much information in a line drawing, I can end up being totally confused by it all and just not knowing where anything is and then I end up rubbing everything out and and doing it freehand anyway so you know I, I find tracing I think is a really really good thing and I do you know um, trace a very quick outline but it's not it's not kind of game you know job done once you've traced it after that you you know it's quite tricky to be able to pick up which lines go where Okay, so then we've got this kind of goes in there. So that's that bit of the head collar. Uh, yeah, that's good. And then that's all dark down here as well. So I can add some more colour into that when I start doing that bit. And then this should be straight. Let's just give it a little bit of a they always find these bits really hard as well the bit you know the bit where it's sort of where you've got something going into something I find those particularly tricky okay good okay that's good um where they're involved with Karen Dash have you tried the blender pencil oh this one uh, da -da -da -da, da -da -da, where is it? I've got it somewhere. I was using it yesterday. Oh Lord, where is it now? Here, this one. This is their colourless blender. It's really good. Um, so yeah, I would recommend this. <laughs> you know, if you're trying to get something really nice and smooth, especially on pastel mat and stuff like that, I definitely recommend it. It's it's just like a, a pencil but completely colourless, and it's um you can sharpen it, and they're really good. I think this is the best one that you can get. Not that I use it a lot, but I would definitely recommend this one. And it's just in a a Derwent um pencil holder. So yeah, definitely. Um, and then. Um, your detail is mesmerizing. How can I do to explain the con cost costumer how the picture they asked for it must be? I often have trouble to explain them how the photo needs to be. Ah, oh, right, okay. Yeah, that is um, that is really difficult actually. <laughs> trying trying to trying to get your customer to understand the quality of photograph that you need is really really hard. You'd think it was easy, you know. 
because you'd think they'd look at a photograph and they'd go, oh, yes, you know, that that's a bit pixelated. I won't send that one. But what happens is they look at the photo that they're sending you and they go, oh, I love that photo. That's that's just my dog. That's the character of my dog. And they don't see the detail. All they see is their their animal. Um, and that's what's really hard because you, you've got to kind of work with them and, and you know, understand that, that their animal is really, really precious to them, especially if it's, you know, it's no longer with them. Um, and it's and it's a case of either a lot of the time working with a really poor photo, um, you know, to get the job done or actually saying, do you know what, I'm not the right person to do this for you. And it's OK to say that. But um, I would say sending a photograph in uh, of something similar and say, you know, can you get me something that looks a little bit like this? Um, and you just have to be really patient with people. Because, you know, I mean, I can spend weeks working with somebody to get the right photograph, literally weeks. And you just have to be really, really patient with them because it's such a it's such an emotive um, subject, especially if the animal isn't isn't there anymore. Um, you know, and you've just yeah, you've just got to be really, really um, patient and just keep keep saying yeah, that's a really lovely photo. I love it. You know, have you got anything that's just a little bit more detailed? Um, you know, and it's it's just a, a, a case of, you know, being patient and, and working with them, um, you know. Or, I mean, if the animal's still alive and you can, go and take the photograph yourself. Vincent, what are you doing? Um... Is it possible for you to type the details about your camera and the software you use later on? Yes, of course I will. I'm really bad with memorising. Yes, what I'll do, Lolo, is I'll put, I'll put all of that in the um, description in the video. Hello from Washington State. Hello. I'm just wondering what your thoughts on the difference in texture between pastel mat and the mitons. Ah, no, they're not. <laughs> Sadly, um, no, they're not. They're not similar at all. Well, I don't think they're similar. Um, they are um, quite different, actually. The pastel mat is more like a um what does it feel like it's more like a fabricy feel if you get a good piece some of them are really bumpy and horrible um but if you get a good piece of pastel mat it's like a fabricy feel um and it's it's sort of almost velvety um whereas the the mitance touch um is more like a sanded paper you know it's, it's very very rough to the touch so then they're, they're not really i don't think they're really comparable um as as papers go i don't think there's anything that's similar to pastel mat at all really um which is a shame and it's 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 due to how how it's manufactured but um yeah they're not they're not that similar although i mean you can get the light over dark and all of that type of stuff you know but you've just got to use a, a slightly different um technique and everything uh, warm mine on the radiator right i'm lost now <laughs> what do you warm on the radiator anita <laughs> your hands your knees <laughs> um i'm trying to think i can't do a project piece to work on um Oh, you warm your your blender on the on the radiator, right? Okay, <laughs> I think that's what you're talking about. Um, oh, hi, Shanna. That's nice to see you. Finished up. You. That's nice. Um, we detail. I find it so hard to explain, especially when the pet is deceased. I've had to cancel a couple of commissions. Yeah, I know. I know, Chloe. It's awful. I mean, I I've never. I haven't. I haven't yet cancelled anything, but sometimes you're sent the most you know awful awful photos but what do you do you know and actually the the whole the whole bit about making a decision well actually it's the it's the deciding to make a decision that's the hard bit once you've made a decision to say i'm really sorry i can't do this for you um then that's a lot easier but it's that it's that kind of head and heart type thing isn't it it's oh god i'm gonna to have to get in touch with them and oh god they're gonna be really sad and oh god you know what do i do but once you actually say no actually this just isn't for me and i just can't i can't do this then it's a much much it's kind of you've, you're done you've, you've decided and then it's much easier so it's the deciding bit that's horrible so again i'm just starting to come in here and you can see you know actually there's just one layer on here and that i don't really need much more 
um you know so p- pastel mat um you you can really get away with um not a huge amount of layers at all which is which is quite nice especially on the white you know if you're just nicely nicely soft with your pressure so i'm just coming down here we're looking at getting this shine bit in here so i'm just going to come up to the shine stop and then bring the bit here come up to the shine and stop and then I'm, what am I going to do? Bring a bit of blue in, I think. Um, oh, that's okay, Tommy. You're all right. I'm, I'm here all day. <laughs> I'm here all weekend. <laughs> that's it. Once, I'm, once I start, that's it. My poor daughter yesterday said I was a bit about an hour and uh, kept on getting these texts. Mum, it's two hours. Are you coming? <laughs> I'm like, oh, God, is it? Is it really? Is it two hours? Um, um, I'm terrible. I just... Um, I just like talking. Hopefully, some of the uh, there'll be some interesting things in in with the complete rubbish. So again, just just watching that your shading is so important because it changes everything. So I I find a lot in my workshops, especially when we're drawing dogs. Um, every everyone will start off with the same sort of outline. Um, and then everything everything just changes from then on because everybody draws and interprets and everything in a different way. But with dogs, especially when it comes to dog noses, um, what will happen is we'll be kind of going through the workshop and we'll be starting to work on noses. And then you'll get, um, you know, you might get somebody who's like, oh, I've got my nose in the wrong place. Look, it's completely wrong, completely wrong. Um, and they start to rub out the nose to like replace it. Um and I'm like, no, 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 it, the nose is in the perfect place. It's just your shading that's out. Um, and just correcting the shading very, very slightly um, will then completely transpose the nose and it will be perfect. Um, you know, and it could just be sort of like a couple of lines and that's it. Done. Finished. Um, you know, and it's it's those little things. That's what I love about workshops is because you, you get all of these little light bulb moments and you see people going, oh, God realized if i'd done that and oh my god i'd have rubbed it all out and i started again i'd have thrown it in the bin blah 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 you know so um it's um it's it those those types of situations i really like i'm putting the stitches in with this one now actually i wish i'd done that down here but anyway it doesn't matter um you can see how nicely the light over the dark works that's quite nice quite like that Tempted to leave that as it is, but I won't. I'm going to put a little bit more detail in. Um, so, um, yeah, it's um, all about, definitely all about the shading. You know, getting it in and making sure that everything's sort of sitting on those correct planes. It's, um, you know. And then I'll do some sort of like little ju -ju 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 -ju, and then I'm like, yeah, that looks fine. We'll move on from there. So, you, you know, you don't really see me doing any tiny, tiny, tiny details. It's more sort of like a semblance of I'm just sort of, you know, bringing a little bit of a little bit of a pencil mark in there, a little bit of a bit in there. Uh, preferred it before. <laughs> um, and just make that a little bit deeper. Anymore. I finally put you live. Oh, okay. that's nice. Hi, Bonnie. Hope you're well. Just having a listen while I do the garden. Oh, that's nice. Any chance you can zoom in a bit? Yeah, I will do. Oh, I will zoom in. It's just it, I, I end up having to peer. I just refocus. Just move all my cups of tea and. Um, all of my cups of tea, my cup of tea. Ooh, that was horrible zoom in. That doesn't look anything like the drawing. I'm just going to zoom out again. <laughs> Get too close in there. Let's refocus. There we go. So hopefully you can see that it's. Um, I always think it looks worse on the. Um, uh, worse when it's zoomed in, and that's why I'd like a really nice camera. Is that better? Um, hopefully that's a bit better. Uh, right, let's just get a little bit more of these in here. Oops, there we go. Um, I'm going to use the uh, 
dark indigo a little bit more in here. I always think less is more as well. I always try to put just enough information in and then leave it. Um, I just think, you know, it, it's very easy to kind of overwork something and go over the top, um, you know, and um, I'd prefer just to sort of get to a point where it, it looks just so and then just leave it. And then what can happen is you can get to a point where you're like really happy with it and then do a little bit more and you're like, oh, crumbs, I wish I'd left it as it was. <laughs> and then you have to take it back again. So you can see you can you can do really, really fine, fine, fine details in the on the pastel mat. <clears throat> There we go. And then I've got a, I was saying yesterday, I've got a video that I'm going to do. Um, I, I was going to make it specifically and kind of talk about stuff and um, draw, um, go through plans and all of that type of thing. And I thought, do you know, I'm just going to, I'm just going to draw and chat and just tell people. Um, it, it's basically I wanted to do a I wanted to do a video for people who were coming to art a little bit later on in life. <clears throat> so I started in two thousand sixteen, and you know at the age of forty six, um, and then so I'm fifty this year, which is pretty scary. Um, and then um, you know, and then realizing that actually what they're doing is 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 amazing, and they want to sort of start making a little bit of extra money or. Um, you know make a living from it um and i thought it'd be quite nice actually just to sort of talk you through my my story and how it how it worked for me um because that's exactly what happened to me i just fell into stumbled into doing doing what i'm doing now um uh, you know with no i mean i had business knowledge and all of that type of stuff but you know no real um you know the drawing side of stuff just you know it was completely new to me so um so I'm, i've got that on the on the agenda which i think i may well do today which is i'm just going to upload to youtube i think <clears throat> so um you know it might be interesting to hear all about my crazy old life so so we, you know we don't have to go um you know really really detailed just just enough to be able to sort of get a an idea of you know what's going on um oh hi nick that's okay you can rewatch it if you want <laughs> you can sit i can be your saturday night company um da, 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 la, 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 la. what color pastel mat do you tend to pick or does it depend on the color of the animal yeah um yes it well i tend to only use the two two colors and that's white and dark gray um the reason i choose those two is because i find they're the most consistent um consistent in quality and consistent in color as well um you know pastel mat i know has got some inconsistency issues um which which i think they they work really really hard to sort of you know overcome and i think it's down to how they manufacture and create the paper make the paper because the surface is actually sprayed onto the board and i think uh, you know i think that's why there is sort of like an inconsistency in quality which is a shame but you know it kind of goes with the kind of goes with the paper and we just have to put up with it i suppose um the reason I use the white and the dark grey, the white I always use for my lighter colour animals, no matter what, because um, I really like, um, I really like drawing white on white. Uh, I think it gives me a much nicer, softer feel. Um, if I've got to draw lots and lots of white on say a dark background i have to put so many more layers in and i lose that that sort of lovely soft quality that subtle quality that i'm after in my work i love seeing it in other people's work but for me it, it's um you know i need that softness and that subtlety that's why i go for white and the dark gray again because of the quality issues 
I find that the most consistent and I find it the most the one of the papers that has the nicest, smoother surface. And I just really like it for um, for like a darker animal. Um, you know, if somebody specifically wants a darker background. Um, it's easier because you've already got all of your midtones in there. So choosing your paper colour is quite good, you know, for if you choose a paper colour where the paper is the colour of your midtones, because that kind of sort of takes out a whole load of pressure from you because your midtones are already there. Obviously, you have to colour over the top of it, but, you know, they're, they're already there. So all you need to concentrate really are your shadows and your highlights, um, you know, so uh, that's why I choose the dark grey and the white. Um you know, and then of course I've got my love for drafting film as well, which um, which is just awesome. I need to do a I need to do a live film on the drafting film. It really is an awesome, awesome surface to work on. So here I'm just um, pulling in a few more of these little sort of textury bits, not particularly following the photograph in that I'm not you know getting all of the details in the perfect place. But I, what I'm trying to do is just get a feel for the leather, um, you know, and getting it to sort of look like it's wrinkled. And that's why I'm using these sort of weird little pencil strokes. And I can come in with my eraser again. Um, so it's possible to do very fine details on pastel mat. I can't. Is that because I don't have enough base layers? Um, well, it could be that you've got a particularly grim piece of pastel mat that is really, really um, grainy. That could be one of the reasons. Um, I tend to be very, very, very picky with the pastel mat sheets. I've got a load of pastel mat sheets here that I won't, I won't use um, because they're, they're just they're too grainy. Um, so what I've got here is it actually feels smooth. This the paper that I'm using here. It actually feels smooth. Um, and I find that using light pressure in the first few layers um, is gives you a better start um, rather than going in too heavy handed, which is going to make your um, make it look even grainier. Um, and then, you, you know, using some of your tools to help you get the smoothness. So when I put down the dark blue in here, the dark indigo in here, it does go down quite grainily. So then I'll I'll counteract that with either a warm grey or I'll bring in some, like the Pablo, um, put that over the top and the Pablo will smooth it out. So you get a really, really smooth, smooth finish very early on. But then what happens is you'll want to darken it up again. So you will put your dark blue back over and then your grain comes back again. So then you have to use the light back over the top of it and you just have to keep going, um, you know, until you get to a point where you're happy but um i would say if, if you're not getting a smooth consistency and you're up to like layer 10 then there's something not quite right with with the either the, with the paper or you might need to just tweak your techniques a little bit you do not need to put i don't know 11 billion layers down um to get the smoothness you, you don't you just don't, um, you know, it's about pencils. So the the polychromos, uh, the Pablo light grey is a really good smoother. The polychromos warm grey too is a brilliant smoother. Um, I mean, I'm using such light pressure here and all it's doing is just sort of merging and smoothing the, the pencil underneath. So I would say, you know, if you're if you're really struggling, then um, it could be that your paper, you've got a particularly rubbishy piece of pastel mat which is a shame but you know it happens so um you know when you're choosing a piece of pastel mat to draw on just give it a good old feel um you know if it feels really bumpy and a bit gritty i'd consider not using it unless you're using pastel or something like that i'm going to put a bit of pink in there again i think um i've been here a while but only just worked out how to chat oh <laughs> that's all right Kath. hello uh, <laughs> Um, from Texas, hi, uh, blah, 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 thank you, it's really helpful, do you use pass map board or card, I use both cap, cath, depends on which one I, I, um, which one I'm, I pick out and it, and if it's okay, 
Um, good evening from Perth, Australia. Not quite my bedtime, but I finally got to join. Oh, that's brilliant, Helen. Nice to uh, nice to have you here. It's the only piece I have so far. Brown bugger when you have to order online. Pasta mat is too expensive to just buy and not be able to use half it. I know, I know, I know. Um, it is. I know that, and it is. It is a pain. Um, the brown, you you should be okay. We should be okay with the brown. It might be just a little bit gritty, but just just really watch how you're using your pencils. That's that's what I would say. You know, really um, use your pencils to help you smooth. So you know, get your Pablo light grey out. Get your uh, Polychromos warm grey two out, um, and just um, use those to help you smooth over the um, the the the. You know, if you're getting a bit too much grit. Um, you know, because it is frustrating. And that's I think that's what frustrates people a lot about pastel mat is that, you know, especially if you come from um, sort of like a smoother um, paper, if you're used to working on a smoother paper, inevitably what happens is you, you, you will you will use the techniques that you use on your smooth paper um, and they don't they don't kind of transfer very well, um, you know, and I. And it's exactly the same. So for me, if I was doing work on smooth paper, I would be trying to use the techniques that I use on pastel mat. And then you get frustrated because they don't they don't transfer very well. So I'm just bringing a little bit of black here. Let's get that back in there. I can say, you know, get bring everything into context, you know, help yourself fill in the gaps around areas so that you can see what's what's what and what's going on so this in here this is a bit of a weird bit of um, leather in here in that it's you can't really see what's happening it's a case of just sort of getting pigment in and then hoping for the best really You see there's some there's some real grainy horrible bits in here so I'm just having to take it put the dark in and then take it back again and get those wrinkly bits in and then I think we'll have a have a go at doing the buckly bit as well unless you're all completely bored of what I'm doing Like, oh my god, Bonnie's doing another live stream. Jesus, will that woman just shut up? <laughs> okay. Um watching this thing while waiting for his work. Big question. Woo. Whichever paper I use, however soft I go, whatever brands I use, I just can't get white over dark. Uh what paper are you using, Helen? Um, because the pastel mat you definitely can get light over dark now whether you can get a bright 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 white is is um you can get bright white and i tend to find that i can get the bright whites on the uh the dark gray pastel mat a little bit better than i can on the uh white but you still can get the the light um you know you still can get it so i could still put white whiskers on a cat um but what I would say is um, you need to get enough layers down on the pastel mat to be able to do that. If you're working on smooth paper, you are you're not going to be able to get white over light over dark. It just doesn't work that way. You don't have the the texture or the amount of tooth to be able to do that. But on the pastel mat, you can. Um, you need to be using pa proper pastel mat, which is the Clairefontaine pastel mat. Um, and... Um, just having sufficient amount of layers really uh you know if you haven't got enough layers down then you you're probably going to end up looking a little bit smeary uh you know but you still you you know enough layers is i don't know between five and ten um you know and it's just about sort of um you know if it's not working then just adding a, a few more layers in. and it's also about the pencil so i use the um museum aquarelle so i use this um and it works really really well um you know uh, it's um so if i was to put some sort of like white in here 
I haven't got enough layers in here for it to really stand out. But it's it is a this is the best one to use. This one and the Pablo, <coughs> really really good pencils. Um, <clears throat> big question: Is it possible to cut past on that board? Yeah, yes, it is. Um, but I would use a I would use a very sharp like a Stanley knife with a good um, a good reliable blade, um, and I would use a metal ruler because um, it's very easy to slip <clears throat> um, you know and and end up cutting yourself and the board is thick it's about three millimeters thick so it's quite thick I have cut it with scissors before in the past and kind of yeah my poor hands <laughs> and then I decided I was going to buy buy a proper knife um, so that's what I would do definitely definitely invest in a in a proper um, you know, like a Stanley knife or something like that. <clears throat> right, so. Let's go for a little bit of tea. <clears throat> yeah, 11 <to> billion. <laughs> yes, 11 to billion. I, um, yeah, I like to keep my layers to a, a minimum if I can possibly. Right, so I'm just going to do this little bit here which shouldn't take too long it's it's um quite a simple just bit of leather down here really um just nice soft pressure going in here and then i can just do a little bit of that buckle and then we'll then we'll call it a day so i don't know what everybody else is up to today anybody doing anything nice I don't know what we're doing i think oh we've got um i think we're having fajitas for tea so that's really good my um my daughter is um she's yeah she's quite good at cooking actually so she's making fajitas for tea so that's good and we've got oh we've got the chocolate spread so that's all right so that's what i'm going to be eating all afternoon honestly i'm going to come out of this isolation even fatter than when i went in Slipsy. We had a um, we had a little video sent to us yesterday of our new puppy, which was quite nice. She's um, she does a lot of rolling around, so we get sent videos every day with an update. They've all got little different coloured um, collars on, and hers is a pink one, so we can see we can see how she's uh, how she's growing up. Bless her, because we won't be able to go and see them until well, I guess until we actually pick her up. So that's quite exciting. We keep telling sis, uh, Slipper she's got a new sister, but she didn't, didn't really seem that interested. <laughs> and Vinny just looks at you with a vacant expression. Bless him. I hope you're all going to join me for drawing him next week. That's going to be quite fun. We'll be there for about, I don't know, six hours <laughs> drawing Vinny. Um, I thought we'd, we'd do quite a bit of... Um, <clears throat> sort of eye and nose um drawing and then um you know give give people an idea of how to get the fur and everything but with him being fluffy um you know you can kind of just sort of draw a few f fluffy bits and, and it'll look you know quite good um but uh you know getting getting the eyes and the nose and everything in and and uh you know those are the those are the most important bits aren't they so we'll definitely concentrate on those Anymore. What is the name of your tea? Oh, it's Earl Grey. <laughs> um, uh, what else is it? Off to a horse, walking, working on a triple head commission. Oh, that sounds good. Yes, I'm. I'm. Um, oh, the tea. What I'm having for tea? We're having fajitas. But the name of the tea that I'm drinking is Earl Grey. Sat knitting, knitting while I watch. That's nice. Off to order chocolate spread. Oh, honestly, Andrew, it's it is it's good. It is really good. It's the white chocolate with hazelnut. It's really good. Um, working on lion and cub, potting up loads of carrot seedlings. Oh, that sounds nice. Oh, that. Oh God, I love dairy milk, fruit and nut. <laughs> um, and uh, yes, so um, she is a Newfoundland cross standard poodle is the so that's slippers breed and it's slippers mum who has had another litter of puppies and we're we couldn't resist having another one because slippers so amazing um so it's uh the mum is a lancia 
Newfoundland. So she's brown and white. And the dad is a standard chocolate poodle. Um, so it's not the same dad as Slipper, but it's the same mum. So we're, um, yeah, we're getting quite excited about that. Because who wouldn't want another Slipper dog? Because she's amazing. So, uh, yeah, so that's good. And we're getting lots of nice updates and everything. Right, let's just bring a little bit more dark into here so we can get the context of that. I don't want to put too much black in because there's quite a bit of um, orangey red and everything that's going to go in there but just want to give it so we can actually see and then I'm going to put a bit more of this brighter blue in so you can see I haven't had to put too many layers down and it's um, you know it's worked out quite nicely really just put a bit of blue into here as well Right, I'm going to put a bit more dark. <clears throat> okay, um, and then we'll just do a little bit on the um, on this buckle, and then I'll um, I will allow you to look, get back on with your day. I don't even know how long we've been here. Could be Sunday. Who knows? So, what colour am I going to use? I need to get my studios out because those are the best ones. Um, burnt umber. That. That's the best one there. Right, so. I'm going to use the Studio Burnt Umber. Um, and I'm just going to very lightly... Just start to bring it in. I mean, it's it's quite small, is this? So, again, the the less we can put in, the better. Because if we try to put pack too much detail into a small area, it just can look a bit not very great. And then I've got my. Um, burnt yellow ochre now the studios are very hard pencils actually that's not yellow enough um what's that there? that's yellow ochre can we use that might use a little bit of that um the studios are very hard um and subtle so we can get quite a lot of nice detail in there and use quite hard pressure which means uh, well it, I, I just I just have a little bit more um, control really over what I'm doing when I use the studios because I can really control where they go right and then I'm going to use the the ivory polychromos but I'm going to just sharpen it up very slightly oh this is the one that we had last week look where it's um, chewed by Vincent sharpen that <clears throat> I do drink Yorkshire tea Nick but very sadly oh, my, my, um, my sharpener has um, decided to eat my pencil yeah very sadly they ran out so the next best thing was um, the next best thing was all grey. Five pups, and you're on. <laughs> you've got another on my. Oh, <laughs> that's so funny. Oh dear, five. That's brilliant. Um, right, I'm going to put that back in the um, pencil holder because I don't want to be holding it while it's all bitten. Um, and then I'm just going to bring this uh, ivory over the top of those other colours. You can see I just put a very light layer of the of the burnt umber and the um, is it burnt umber raw umber and the burnt yellow ochre, and then I'm just going to bring quite hard pressure because it's so tiny. There's there's, there's you know it's 
it's quite difficult really to get a really really good amount of detail in there get that in there okay and then let's go back in again with the raw umbra just give that a quick sharpen as well And then I'm just going to come back in again and just sort of bring in some little areas of, I'll tell you which would be a good one is the bronze. Let's see if I can find the bronze. I can't find it now. There it is. Right, I'll just sharpen this one as well, sorry. When you're finished, please tell us the reasons you switch between. Um, oh. Yeah, well, the reasons I um, the reasons I switch between the different makes is usually to do with either the colour or the feel of the pencil and what it's going to do to the layers underneath. So the reason I'm using the studios now, so this is Studio Bronze, it's a really good colour. The reason I'm using the studios is because they're really hard um, and I can actually press harder on the paper um, and it, it, they will go down smoother. Um, anything that's really soft, especially on the pastel mat, um, is you're going to get a lot of pigment that comes out, um, which means that it kind of looks a little bit grainier to begin with. So something for something like this in a really tiny place, um, using the studios is good because I can be really, really precise about where I'm putting them. The colours are also very, very... Um, subtle um, I can get finer lines with them um, and the 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 studios the Derwent studios um, which are the the same um, core and color as the studio artists there's no other color like them they are really really unique in their color and their colors are superb um, so you know they're not for everybody because they are quite hard um, but I absolutely adore them they are my definite go-to pencils for um, anything that's sort of like this related or orangey or you know anything like that they're brilliant brilliant pencils so very quickly we've got like a quite a nice little buckle there um, and then I'm just going to bring in very bravely the slice tool so this is the manual pen cutter that I'm using here um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring in a few little highlights. Um, when you start working with um, the slice tool, you have to be a little bit brave. But also it's about, it's about using it in the correct way. So you're not going to use it cutting like that because that, that's all you'll do is just cut. How I tell to sort of teach people to use it is if you hold it upside down in your hand like that, and then you, if you're right handed, if you just turn it slightly to the left, and then you use it in a sort of scraping motion like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and just give myself a little highlight in here. So I'm using very, very gentle pressure. Sometimes it works better than others, but usually it works quite nicely. So using very gentle pressure, I'm going to bring another little highlight in here. So I'm not wanting to cut. I'm just wanting to give myself a nice smooth highlight. And then I'm going to bring another one in here at the bottom here. So just gently, gently, gently. Okay. And then I'm just going to bring a little tiny bit in the top there. Um, and it just gives it a little bit of a little bit of something. You can't you can't see amazingly because they they are quite small, but um, you know just gives you a little bit of extra something. And then let's just colour that in there. Um, and and there we have sort of like, um, I, I mean, I know it's not incredibly detailed. And if we'd got something that was much bigger, we could have, you know, you could go really into town and getting all of that detail and everything in there. But um, sometimes it doesn't matter. You, you just need the semblance of um, and, um, you know, and then it's and then it's done. 
just a little bit more down there, just a little bit, bit of a highlight in there. And there we go. Um, right, so um, I'm hoping that that's been really useful. Um, I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to be doing some more live streams anyway because I, I I really enjoy them but all of my workshops um well I'm not sure about the September one in the UK but all of the workshops uh, you know over the uh, in the world <laughs> all the workshops in the world all of my workshops all over the world have been postponed now until next year which is you know it's really sad but uh, hey there's nothing not an awful lot I can do about it so I'm going to take the opportunity to be able to do some teaching online so um, if anybody is interested in a um, workshop on Zoom, um, I'm trialling one with my patrons. I'm just about to put some dates out. I'm going to do it over about four sessions. So if anybody's interested in doing something like that, do contact me because um, there will be a limited amount of people on each one. Um, but I thought I'd do sort of maybe a couple of workshops via Zoom and, um, you know, see how we see how we get on. Um, you know, where we're all drawing together, we can talk to each other, I can help you if you're struggling with something, that type of stuff. So I'm going to be going to be working on some of those. Um, so if you are interested, get in touch, let me know and I'll, and I'll sort of get you onto a onto a list of, you know, first come first served. But um, have a lovely weekend. Um, happy drawing. Um, and, um, and I'll, I'll catch you all again very soon.